Hello, uh, thank you for joining the midweek edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. Today on the program, Governor Akiridolu advocates part time legislature scrapping of Senate as House of Representatives begins zonal hearing on constitutional review. Bandits demand 110 million naira ransom for release of abducted Tegina Islamia school children as police bust kidnappers camp in Abuja and rescue 14 persons. And later on the show, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar blames unemployment among youths for banditry and kidnapping, advocate job security to secure Nigeria. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Utitoju and Sam Ibemere. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. <laughs> Thank you for staying with us. The National Assembly is seen as one of the major conduit pipes that drain Nigerian resources. The ongoing constitutional review is giving Nigerians opportunity to address that as the House of Representatives begins its zonal hearings on amendment of the constitution across the six geopolitical zones on the country. Now, the governor of Ondo State, Rotimi Akeridolu, has called for the scrapping of the Senate to give way for a unicameral legislature. He also advocates adoption of a part-time sittings for the House of Representatives to cut costs of governance. TVC News correspondent Ayodeji Muradio was at the hearing and now reports. This event is coming a week after a similar hearing was organized by the Senate. Participants here are drawn from Undo, Oshun, and Ikita State. Deputy Leader of the House of Representatives said the engagement became imperative because of the yearnings of the people. Any changes that we have to do must have the contribution and the input of the Nigerian people. <coughs> Because in the first place, the constitution is meant for the people and must be made by the people. While declaring the hearing open, Governor of Ondo State called for the scrapping of the Senate. He said the call became necessary because of the high cost of governance in the country. Represented by its deputy, Akeridulu pointed out that the scaling down of members of the National Assembly and the ministries would provide more funds for developmental projects in the country. Camera legislature, one chamber, not two. And if the House of Representatives, we say the representative of the people, the lower chamber, you know, with um, they are closer to the people with smaller constituency, then we are saying Senate can be scrapped. Then let's have House of Representatives. We need to grant local autonomy creation of state police, among others. We didn't bill among the bill of university with oil money. Neither did we bill about the man of university with oil money. Ditto, uh, University of Nigeria and Sudan. But because we have a constitution that was working, I believe the National Assembly favorably favors some of the things that the state has conversed independence of the judiciary, independence of the legislature. And to a certain extent, I mean, some form of um, system that empowers the state. And so, without having a demarcation, uh, if, if we have practiced democracy for 22 years, by all standards, local government is an adult by the definition of ordinary law. We are 22 of them. Why must we be the, the constitution would have been given our money? To our father. It is hoped that the issues raised here by different groups will be considered when the nation's constitution will be reviewed by the National Assembly. Yes, sir, you did, Jim, are you there? And um, did you vintage Governor Lua Rotimi, Akeridolu, in the last um, weeks, Akiri Dodo has been at the forefront and I had to remember the, his days as the president of the Nigerian Bar Association. His suggestions, his uh, contribution is always very radical in nature. Scrapping of the Senate, outright scrapping of the Senate and going for a unicameral legislature. 
there are 109 senators and there are 360 House of Representatives members. A state like Lagos State, we have three senatorial districts, but 27 representative seats. What do you make out of this? Um, it's not the first person to make this suggestion. And um, it's all down to the fact that it's expensive for us to continue to maintain the House of Representatives as well as the Senate. Even the former governor of uh, Imo State, um, Richard Sokoroja, suggested that, that one person should be enough to represent a state. So we are approaching the ticking point in our country in terms of our finances, in terms of um, how to deliver the dividends of democracy to the people. We have so many competing needs. And we have found this, um, pre this presidential model extremely expensive for us to, 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 to maintain. So I support his suggestion. I've made this kind of suggestion in the past that the House of Reps, being the closest to the people, can, can do the job. We saw what happened in Senegal. The president of Senegal came and sacked the Senate. He said, no, we do not need the Senate. So uh, big decisions like this, we must find a way to take. Look at, I was compiling a list of House of Reps members for some of the biggest states in our country. Lagos and Kano, each of them has 24 House of Rest members. So if we go by Akredolu's suggestion, we will save 20 each from Lagos and Kano. So Oshun has 10. Again, if we, sa if we save if we go by a suggestion, we will save six. Uh, we will save six out of Oshun. Six plus 40. That's 46 already. Kaduna has 15 House of Rest members. 15 for Kaduna. If we go by that suggestion, and four, we take four out of, uh, out of, the, out of uh, what Kaduna has, we save 11. That's 46 plus 11. Then we come to Akwaibom. Akwaibom has 10. Rivers has 11. Or your has 15. It's just as Kaduna. So you can imagine if we go on like that, across board, we are going to be able to, say, uh, to, to reduce the number of House of Reps members. Because he didn't just suggest that we can keep the House of Reps. Is saying that we can the back time. we can reduce the number to four, and it's also suggesting part time uh, part part time. You have uh, the work hand. You can always uh, uh, legislature. After all, a lot of them don't even show up. Yeah. Some show up simply sleeping. They don't. They don't make any contribution on the floor. Some will not come at all. A lot of them. Do. If we are to strictly follow the the the, the, the uh, one it eats this yes that each of them should the sit honestly a lot of these people will, will, will be in deficit because many times they don't even go and when they go they they, they are discussing germane issues you can you see them bantering with their colleagues showing no interest at all in what is being discussed and if we are going to do uh, like a KPI mm. for each house member, that the, men, the number of bills that you've raised, yes. the number of motions you've raised within your this thing, a lot of them, a lot, a lot of them will not uh, <laughs> will not make the grade mm. because the over time, many of them have um, simply been the national assembly to to warm uh, to make the number uh, to warm their seats, which mm. is not. Uh, um, desirable. He wants us to return to the, and this is the three Republican constitution. That is where I disagree. 
we've gone too far mm. from 1963 Thanks. to this time mm. to imagine that we can recreate we can recreate what obtained in 1963 at that time at that time no one envisaged even a military coup because it came before our first military coup mm. no one envisaged that we could balkanize ourselves to the point that we have this number of states mm. at that time we didn't have so how do you then run things because they want some of the um, those stipulations that we had in the uh, constitution to prevail at this time but with the plurality that is now evident with the number of states that we have it is impossible to to even think of such mm. a scenario so maybe uh, some of the th some of the um, conditions uh, precedent at that time we can recreate but to simply return to that constitution and uh, wholesale is just not practicable and sam well, when we when you look at uh, the suggestion coming from a senior advocate of nigeria a governor and uh, he's saying that look <laughs> i know we have senators from his own states <laughs> in the senate we have friends in the senate but the <laughs> but the point blank thing there is that look he's saying that it could be scrapped yes uh, but you know I the people that will sit down to legislate on the procedure to okay. scrap the sen uh, that the uh, senators themselves like, and like the red members they have to sit down together the two houses <laughs> it's like asking them to commit political suicide <laughs> and, you, and you, wonder, you wonder how that will happen mm -hmm. but seriously speaking um the fundamentals don't do good at all mm. we 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 pretend that all is well indeed all is not well Nigeria might be very blessed with resources, both human and otherwise. But we are largely not productive. And that is the truth. People think that we have the resources, the money especially, to throw around. But we don't. And one thing that has been established is that the presidential system of government is indeed very expensive. Quite expensive. And we need to begin to tell ourselves some home truths. Like you just said, it wouldn't be the first time that there is this clamor for us to look at the cost of governance. Essentially, that's what we're talking about. It is too expensive for us to run. You're not just looking at the legislatures, you know, legislators at both uh, the upper and lower houses. You're also looking at their aids. <laughs> I mean, look at the entire government. Legislative age? Do you understand? Aids. And some of them have... Drivers? Ayo, you just Lawyers? You, you just name it. You just name it. So, uh, Akridoli is not someone you want to associate with frivolities. His position must have, must have been very well thought through. But how this is going to be executed is a different, That's is a different ball game. Problem. I mean, because you're not... The process of executing I mean, it, you've got to go to the House. It you, Senate, there will, must be concurrent between the House and the Senate. And, and, not and just, 24 out of 36 exa states of assembly exactly so. must append to this. And after that time, it will go to Mr. President. And then... Mr. You, President will have begin to sign off. It's, it's going to be very rigorous, but... <laughs> um, I think that the opportunity, opportunity that this moment has presented to us is just for us to talk. But all of us agree that, there's, that we just don't need to travel around the country and begin to talk. This country needs to have its people sit down and genuinely talk and speak with themselves. Not just the, the, what, in my view, is basically a jamboree of traveling around the country and asking ourselves to make contributions about how the constitution is going to be no, amended. It costs billions. It costs of billions course. every other four years. Do you understand? It costs so, billions. Beyond what His Excellency Governor Akiridu Luiz is suggesting is the fact that there are fundamental issues to be addressed concerning the Nigerian project. That is just, that's just one leg of it. The cost of governance is just one leg of it. How we are able to you know, reinvent ourselves as a people, as a country, and begin to have a stakeholder, build a stakeholder mentality where everyone you know, feels that he has a stake you know, on on, on, the, on the basis of equity, on the basis of justice, is what we are basically talking about. So cost of governance is just one leg of it. Brilliant as it is, how it's going to be executed is, of course, what you and I you know, uh, think is not going to be very easy to come by. Because the process is, is going to be very tedious and very rigorous. And you can be sure that there will be a lot of uh, frustrations even within, within that um, exercise. Jude, in real times, 
let, let's look at the costs these people incur, at least in the last two, three years. Let's look at the 109 senators. Um, let's look at the National Assembly, the, the budgetary allocation in the last two, three years. Let's look at the 50 billion they've requested to refurbish the National Assembly. I don't know, maybe that has been granted or given to them. I don't know. But how, how expensive is maintaining these legislatures? It's, um, it's legislators. Legislators, yes, it's uh, extremely expensive. One, we do not even know what they earn. That's <laughs> no a big one, question. No one knows what they earn. People know what the revenue mobilization. Yes. Um, um, fact. Revenue, yes, uh, what is it called? F uh, FAC. Mm. Um, f f uh, federal. Uh, new allocation uh, <laughs> commission yes mm. what it has determined that each lawmaker should earn is known Basic. public officers what they should earn is known mm. the devil is in the allowances oh God. that these people go home with and Governor Craig Olu also said no lawmaker desires to end what the revenue mobilization and allocation committee does not know hmm. so so they the revenue mobilization and allocation committee but just give 20 percent his job is to determine what you earn yes. as public officers now they earn much more than because the is their statutory wages hmm. they earn much more than that the allowances you do not know hmm. and no lawmaker has had the courage to come before Nigeria and say that we the courage because he knows what will happen if he tries to <laughs> do it. <laughs> None of them has had the courage to stand before Nigeria and say, gentlemen, this is Not what I Shehu Sani. <laughs> Shehu Sani is the <laughs> person who has, done, who, who has given us the closest. <laughs> yes. But he didn't even tell us everything. He, he, we thank him because he gave us a clue. Uh, kind of ideas. He <laughs> gave us a clue. We now know that. Oh, so these people earn this much. This but he didn't, he didn't even tell us the whole story. Mm -hmm. If he had told us, the whole story would have been suspended. Now, <laughs> there was a live um, show mm -hmm. here at TVC mm -hmm. where a senator was asked to uh, mention what he earns. In the UK, we know what <laughs> the, P, uh, the PM earns. You can just Google it. America, it. we know the wages of the president. <laughs> the president, yes. He does not earn anything outside of that. <laughs> and he cannot do PP. <laughs> it's not permitted. And they don't give them money when they go on oversight. <laughs> oh, look, even when you're on vacation, I remember when Obama was on vacation, he had to pay his bills. <laughs> Here we feed them. <laughs> and every... A budget cycle, the same. You see the same headlines. Furniture allowance, uh -huh. clothing the same, allowance, the same items coming up. Newspaper allowance, you know? inconvenience allowance. <laughs> so, we have a situation in which we need to do something about the cost of governance. I was doing some research, and I saw that from December, our foreign reserves has been shrinking. The CBN even reported that for the month of May, it shrunk by $640 million. Hmm. There has been a progressive shrinking. Because we're always doing it to defend. Because they, even, they are not earning enough. And even the loans that you take, those loans are foreign exchange denominated. You must pay for them. And it is from the foreign reserves that you take money to pay for those loans. So people need to know that we are not in, in rude health. People should not deceive us. Mm. It, when a, comp a country decides to devalue its currency, mm. it is for a reason, and the reason is not palatable. No, most Nigerians will not will agree with you that Nigeria is broke. Oh. Those are those that okay. we have. We, we can see the figures. Okay. We can see everything. Somebody the other day went on uh, the internet 
to say that uh, GDSS Nigeria is broke, that <laughs> Nigeria is not broke. <laughs> let us the, the, let <laughs> us debate. Let's look at the figure. Let's crunch the figures, <laughs> as economists say. <laughs> it's not enough to simply go and attack <laughs> people without the facts. Every month, what, what are we to distribute before? What, and what are they are we? distributing now? CBN is <laughs> CBN is begging Nigerians to send dollars home <laughs> and, and get and, 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 and get, 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 get some five naira on each <laughs> dollar. <laughs> If mm. we on on, on mm. the average on the That's average it. Nigerians re, Nigerians send on the average thirty billion dollars home mm. every given year. Ah. Now, if all of those Nigerians were to agree to bring in money and be rewarded, the way CBN is What's pleading, rewarded? it means that you will spend one hundred and fifty billion uh, naira simply trying to entice people to bring in dollars. Who does that? It, it, it shows that we are in dire straits. Go and listen to what the, uh, the manufacturers are saying. Hmm. The dire straits that we are in does not, it, 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 it does not, um, should not cause us to be doing some of the things that we are doing. Naturally, we should do some thinking. Ask ourselves that. Uh, can we justify this, ex uh, uh, this obscene wages that we pay our public officers at a time when revenue is sliding dangerously, at a time when we are almost dependent on China and other countries for loans mm. that we cannot even implement our budget unless we go and take a loan? The president two weeks ago just asked for the, uh, from the Senate to allow him borrow in excess of $6 billion dollars to implement the budget so we can't even implement our budget without taking loans and people still want us to build a whole t everything is fine yes i know there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, avenues through which our resources are leaking but we are not as buoyant as we think the we reality, are reality reality we don't know just because i know the up. fundamentals don't look good at mm. I, I hope that that reality would dawn on people so that we can ha all have a national rethink mm. and do what is right. If the president of Senegal can take that bold move to say mm. we don't need this second uh, 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 legislative house, okay. I think we can get to that too. Yakub is calling us from Lagos. Thank you for joining us, Yakub. Thank you very much. Good evening, and the other gentleman in the studio. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I, I think uh, I totally agree with the governor of Ondo State. But, Babajide, uh, it is going to be very, very difficult mm. to get those house crap. You know why? Why? Because this is the same people going around the country mm. trying to amend the constitution. When, when, the, when they go back to the house, they are going to force it down. Yes. And then, Babajide, I would like you to do something. If you send your guys out today to go and do investigative uh, journalism, to hack around, some filling stations, especially around Labour State and then the, the major city in this country, over the legislative house, uh, later, and the, the senators. Why? Because the money they got is too much. You know why? The, the even some area that you, you are ordinarily, the filling station must not be able to sit there. They will, because they know people in the power. They, they, they know how to, how to get themselves out and make sure the filling station is right there. Just like the team. And then nobody did last week, actually. I want you to tell us this, because you said earlier that in Senegal, the president of Senegal came in and then he stabbed the uh, Senate House. Is it possible in this country, if Mr. President does, I can, I can tell you that the senior advocate of this country... Thank you. This is the democracy. No, it's the democracy there as well, but, but the thing is, you need to get the buy-in of the people. Yes. Once even, you have the people behind you. Especially even the lawmakers now. There's a lot that you can, mm. that you can do if you have the people behind you. That is the difference. Mm. Ayo, we're back to what we were saying earlier cost of governance and uh, maybe I should just remind us of a video that went viral you know um, of governor states who have to open the door for another person to open the door before the door to the governor's car is, is open. It just tells you that we are in a mess. We, we don't seem to take ourselves very serious. We don't seem to understand that we need to do something about the cost of governance and it starts with us. That is just the truth. So when we had this clamor for a total, you know, um, review 
of how we are managing ourselves as a country, we should take ourselves serious. And when you talked about what happened in Senegal, who says the president cannot initiate a bill? So it's about, it's about how the leadership, you know, appreciates the challenges before, before, before the country. The president can initiate a bill. Mm. Any person can initiate a bill. But the lawmakers, like we said, are they ready and willing to commit political suicide? I doubt. The kind of comfort they enjoy is the soldier that they don't want to let go. But we have to continue to talk to them. This country is not as buoyant as people think it is. We are not right. producing. We are not adding value to our, the resources God has blessed us with. And that's the truth. And All right. People do, if people put the nation first, mm. it mm. is not yes. political suicide. If you know that if we go on like this, that we are all going to sink. We are all going to sink together. There are big decisions that we can take. Mm. And, and that, in my view, will not amount to political suicide. Because when that was done in Senegal, some people were victims. But the nation has not crumbled as a result. You know? Okay. We'll take this break. We'll be right back after this breather. Please stay with us. Your favorite news and current affairs program, journalist Hangout, and I have Babaji the Koladi to touch in house and Sam Bimere. Now, the ever daring nature of bandits in Nigeria is ever surprising. The kidnappers of the student of Tegina Islamia School in Niger State are demanding a ransom of 110 million naira before they can be released. But as the bandits make inroads into the country's capital, Abuja, they are meeting some resistance. The FCT command of the Nigerian police, in a joint operation with DSS officials, rescued about 14 kidnapped persons after storming their camp in Kubwa, in Buari Area Council of Abuja. Let's share the video with you. Uh, this is the kidnappers come at uh, Buariko. Yeah. Uh, one person was super rescued at Biazun, uh, in between Mina and Abuja. This is a special operation launched by the Commissioner of Police, combined with hunters and vigilantes, with the anti kidnapping personnel, led by my humble self, Commander Anti Kidnapping FCT. Our operation is still in progress. These Commander Hunters Adamawa from the DSS, uh, one of the hostages was already rescued. We are at the verge of getting the orders. Uh, we believe that some of them escaped with bullet wound, but we are still on search. We are about uh, 26 kilometers away from Beijing, east, 30 kilometers north from Kubwa. Uh, this is the anti kidnapping operation. Uh, they are all here, the hostages. We are trying to take them out, but they are relaxing before we take them out. We are still very close to the camp. No, this is this is the Commissioner of Police, uh, FCT, CP Balachi Roma, who sent his team to come and rescue you. Uh, no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem. Thank you, no problem. Thank you. No problem. very happy to be released and happy to be alive already very weak yeah. very weak they could be early jubilate yeah. and see it's um it's tough it's tough in our country at this time and i would say this is not the time to threaten bandits just show them your color show them what you can do come out not, don't don't issue threats you've issued enough threats and they are not listening you are still issuing threats don't issue threats, Mr. President. Don't issue threats to any criminal. Smoke them out. Just do the needful. That is what Nigerians expect. These threats amount to nothing to these guys. They don't take your threats seriously. Go for them. And if your men refuse to carry out your directive, if they will not work hard enough to keep Nigerians safe, get them out of their jobs that's how it's done Keep everywhere period periodically yeah that's how it's done give them a target let heads roll we can't have things degenerate to this level and everyone the people whose duty it is to protect us will still be sleeping easy feeling comfortable that mm, mr president will not sack me who does that elsewhere because they even anticipate that they will not be spared some of them will resign yeah. once 
there is a major. Uh -huh. Somebody uh, will not spend 66 months in that position. Yes, and, not and we cannot solve a problem. The scorecard to yes, they still didn't want to go. After you were telling us that it would huh? take 20 years to solve the problem. Yes. When you were Meanwhile, there, you, you, were there, you never told us. Oh. You never told us that it would be that long because you know that you knew that if you said so, you then you have no legitimate basis to remain on your job. You left the job and now told us that it's, it's a doomsday prophecy. You gave us a doomsday prophecy that by the grace of God will not come to pass. Amen, no. 20, 20 years, years, 20 years of Boko Haram insurgency it would have. We, we, in fact, I can only imagine what will what happen. happen to that, that region. Now we are not. It's not Boko Haram alone that we are dealing with. Banditry. We are dealing with banditry. We've we, we've we've warned on this program that look in Ab Abuja, some of those satellite towns are not safe at this time. Yes. Measures should be taken to protect people. Don't even make it uh, easy for them to kidnap people as they are doing. They are closing in now. They are closing in. This is, this about is Kubwa. It's not far from Kubwa. This, 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 this is not far. This is, you know, Buari, we were talking about Buari mm. the other day. That mm. look, that area. I even want that the back of the university of Abuja mm. is, is, is heavily forested. That if that they don't the take measures, one day, one day, if they don't take measures to protect the students, one day you just hear that this. Uh, Useless people have, uh, have entered the university and taken students away. After all, before uh, in broad daylight, bandits went into the university in Makoti and took away students inside the inside the premises, not outside. Though not that they were waiting for a or something, they you know. entered inside. Mm. Even ABU lecturers mm. were were kidnapped right in yes. their mm. in their uh, uh, what's it called in their staff quarters. We've seen aviation workers in Kaduna being kidnapped right inside their uh, uh, quarters. So we, we no 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 more no, don't issue threats anymore. Some. When Nigerians ask mm. that, speak to them. They are not asking you to issue threats. Mm. They are asking you. They want you to tell them what steps you are taking. To reassure them that the country will be more secure in the coming days. They are not asking you to issue threats. Yes, yeah, Sam, the, the Mr. President spoke extempore yesterday and he spoke majorly about the uh, people, the agitators. But this one, we have another problem up around the country, which is banditry. And as Julia said, it's not something that we've not shown our capability as a sovereign country as a federal republic of nigeria we should bring fire on those people and tell them that look the federal government is in charge it's a, it's a very serious uh, case Ayo. um i just my mind just raises back to this to the images of uh citizens who have been kidnapped in the last couple of months okay, okay. and and i wonder what the world thinks of us these pictures go out to the world do you understand and it simply tells anyone watching beyond our borders yeah that this country has gone, control. has gone to the dogs simple it's gone to the dogs and the same visuals of you so, student that we were rescued. Do you understand? this is just one and we are some four or five days ago, 200 students. I mean, we just talk about these figures as if it's just mm, statistics. Yeah. We don't even we lost count. We don't understand. We don't have a so, figure. And so no, when, they've confirmed when, that they are 165. Okay, from 156. Those two, uh, those, uh, yeah, 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 I read somewhere that some of them were just too, too young to, you know, stand, well, stand the stress feet. of, you know, even if it is just two persons. Okay, so it, it's, it, it just paints a very horrible picture okay. of our country before the rest of the world. And okay, they won't lie I, down. Keep, I, keep, I keep saying, so them, I keep mm -hmm. saying to anyone who is listening, Nigeria is sadly closing in on that status of a failed state. Mm. That is just the truth. As Mr. We can, we, 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 we can pretend. What have I not done right? That is where we are. Do you understand? I wish it's handless. You know, you can just be able to reflect the truth because Mr. President was asking, Have I not followed the constitution? Have I not done this? Have I not done that? I look at it's as if Mr. President has lost touch with the reality out there. Or oh, those who are around him are making him feel that everything is safe and, and all That's right. That's what they say. That's what. So, and, and I think that 
it's it's honorable you get to just to tell Nigerians it, to the president. It's honorable to tell Nigerians the right thing. Okay, even if it means. Giving everything away. Because when you listen to the speech, you know that see, Nigerians, see, Mr. President does not appreciate the gravity of what is happening I, 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 around the country I, and even the southeast. I, 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 we, we can Let's sit down here. We can <laughs> sit down here and pretend. I will be surprised. It will be surprising to to learn that the man who pres, who superintends over this country is not aware of what is happening around him. He still will to take these things on these challenges. Okay. Do you do you want to leave everything to your to, to your aides and then they walk up to you? Who who, who, who does that? Do they, in the midst of pervasive poverty, in the midst of inflation around, now you now see these bam, bandits. The the amount they call mm. for ransom. It's not, uh, what mm. they tell people to pay is not consistent with the economic uh, reality on uh, ground. Yes. If, if not, if you are sending your student, your children to school, you have a four fifty thousand, five hundred thousand naira per term, and somebody is asking you to go and bring this one. Okay, look at these uh, pupils of an Islamic school, or what your rubbers will call Ileke. Okay, how much this Tegina Islamic school? Yes, <laughs> this should be a, 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 a religious, a religious organization supporter school. Do they the care? Is, they imagine that government will come up with this. Pay. And pay ransom. It's not. It's not possible for the parents of those children, ah. or children of Islamic school, to raise hefty money. They are bank hoping that oh, if we keep these children for some time, or we threaten to kill them because they are saying now that look, if the money is not paid, they are going to waste the children. They believe that look, if they continue to keep these children, that government will intervene at some point. These guys, we tolerated them for too long. We tried to appeal to their um, sense of reason if for too one. long. Now we have seen that we are dealing with animals. These are not people that you, you <laughs> can placate in any way or try to convince that, look, um, um, it is right to behave in this way. No. They have lost... Their sense of reasoning. That kind of money, do they spend it with baboons in the forest? I don't understand. This is the people who kidnap. It's a very big uh, business now, and there are some very big people behind them. It's not those dirty looking I, I don't uh, understand. guys flogging those students that are going to spend this kind of money. No. It's um, people even from outside of our country. Foreigners have been sent in. Yes. Foreigners have been sent, not just ammunition, foreigners have been sent in to do this business of kidnapping. A lot of people kidnapping us now are not Nigerians. Hmm. They, are, they came all the way from Mali. Some are Mauritanians. And that's the more reason we should be very ruthless on them. A lot of them are not Nigerians. And they're very wicked, unreasonable. The more reason they are very wicked is they are not even, they are not part of us. I'm not saying if they were part of us, they could still be reasonable. They, could, they would still behave like animals even if they were part of us. But I'm saying that a lot of them, they don't give a damn because they are not even, they are not from your country. It's not, I, I've interacted with bandits before. I know what I'm saying. A lot of them are not Nigerians. That's a fact. God knows that. A lot of them are not Nigerians. I've interviewed victims of banditry in Casino and they told me that the people who came to kidnap them are not, they are not Nigerians. But I'm not saying that some Nigerians that are not, not involved. part of them. I've not joined the business. People like Daudawa and the rest of them the, that eventually got killed mm, by uh, a rival gang. It's what, a Nigerian. Yes, it's a Nigerian. So there are many of them who are Nigerians. But increasingly now, Foreigners are coming into our country. It has become big business. It has become it has become big business for the mm. business of kidnapping. You know, it has become but big serious. business. So this this kind of money when it comes in, they are not. It's not those dirty guys that will spend it. I told you the case of a retired soldier that was kidnapped in this farm, and thankfully he had about ten thousand dollars in his car. He said, "Please don't take me away. I can give you uh, some money." And they agreed. They took the dollars from him and walked he away. He built himself with ten thousand. Yes. Good money. Mm, yes. Yes. So that 
We will keep it safe because same, the same possibility same of staying alive. alive. This, this that better, just one it's better to stay alive. Mm. It's better to stay alive. When you are alive, you, you make much more than that money. Because when they later. kill them, when they kill them, when they are dead, you just move on. You won't be able to pinpoint the death to them. Right. And right. for us, it's better to see someone, even if you see his corpse. If the, you get killed in their custody, nobody will see your remains. Hmm. That's the thing. We are even hearing that some of them sell body parts to ritualists. Especially if the kidnapping happened around uh, the southwest uh, uh, and even the southeast. Did body parts. You know, there is even a bigger question to ask. Mm -hmm. We understand that people are taken hostage. Mm -hmm. We understand that ransom is going to be paid. And in all this, you ask yourself, how is the state responding to it? Mm -hmm. What is the place so, of intelligence? The state is simply saying now so, that, like, okay, we will not pay ransom. So, but if you don't pay ransom, you go after how them. do you stop them? Do you understand? Because the individual, private individuals will pay ransom to save their people. And somebody in the federal There's government no is telling them that we can see. They're not, the they are not operating, to deal with they are not operating on the moon. Cases. Nobody uh, mm. is interested in that. Just and we know where they say, are. <laughs> we are not interested in uh, who, who, who is in charge. Mm -hmm. Now, fin finally, it is commonly said that an idle hand is a devil's workshop. For former Vice President of Nigeria, Atiku Abubakar, shares the same sentiment. The former number two man blamed unemployment among youths for wanton banditry, kidnapping, and other social vices in the country. Atiku, who spoke at the inauguration of the corporate headquarters of the Standard Microfinance Bank and Adama Plastic Company in Yola, is advocating job security to secure Nigeria. Let's share the story with you. This, on behalf of Prime Group, Nigeria Limited, to the glory of the Amen. In 2020, the estimated youth unemployment rate in Nigeria was almost 14.2%. The National Bureau of Statistics says 13.9 million Nigerian youths were unemployed. The alarming rate of youth unemployment has been of concern to former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, the second biggest employer of labor in Adamawa State. Speaking at the opening of the headquarters of Standard Microfinance Bank in Yola, Atiku said his vision is to see that everybody is gainfully employed, noting that social vices are the result of unemployment. He added that his intention is to give people the opportunity to be gainfully employed so that their productivity would not be wrongly channeled. All these issues of banditry, kidnapping, are as a result of unemployment. Therefore, if we can create opportunities for people to be gainfully employed, whether you have been to school or not, every person has a productive capacity. The only thing is that are we going to deploy those productive capacities in a positive way or in a negative way? Now, we have so many of our inhabitants involved in banditry, arm robbery, name it, but it's all as a result of unemployment. My vision is to see that everybody is gainfully employed. In his remarks, Governor Amadou Fintiri commended the former vice president for the initiative, stressing that government is working to ensure that the state is safe, to attract investors, and for businesses to flourish. He urged the Central Bank of Nigeria to grant the Standard Microfinance Bank license to operate in the Northeast. Governor Fintiri promised to support 3M Group, a company that will produce different kinds of sacks. He said government is committed to providing them an enabling environment for the business to grow and pledged to be in tune with the vision of the founder to rid the state and country of poverty. I'm aware that beside the state government, 
His Excellency is the next employer of labor in our dear state. A development that has endeared him to the people on our own, we will continue to create that safe environment for business to flourish in Adam our state. To this note, I ask the Central Bank of Nigeria to graciously grant Standard Microfinance the license to operate in the Northeast sub-region. The general manager of Adama Plast, Shehu Atiku, said the Priam Group has the capacity to generate $20 billion revenue for the state in the next few years. And Nigeria's economy is enormous. We are here to commission two plans. First, I will speak on the Wolfram Sachs plan. The vision of our founder for this Wolfram Sachs plan is first and foremost to serve as a backward integration strategy to provide sacks for the Rico Gado factory. Before now, Rico Gado was purchasing all of its sacks from Lagos. But today, 100% of the sacks being used by Rico Gado Nutrition is produced here in Adamawa State. By the chairman of Northeast Commodity Association said the establishment of a factory in the state is the right step in the right direction. Honestly, what we have witnessed today uh, is a big achievement in not only Adamawa State, but Nigeria as a whole. It's a company that produces sack and it goes a long way in adding value to what our farmers are producing. Before now, our farmers used to go to Kano and other parts of the country to procure those important items. But today we find them here. We thank the founder of this company for this great job. Adamawa is one of the states who was picked by the Boko Haram research it is believed that the former vice president's plan to reduce youth unemployment will reduce the rate of crime in the state. As Turaki of Adama State, former vice president Atiku Abubakar, and um, since 2007, following his campaign and everything, you will know that he's somebody that has always been prepared in terms of what to do if he becomes uh, the president. Now he's talking about look to eradicate banditry, un unemployment, kidnappers, and taking all the youth. Because when you look at the age brackets of the people perpetrating these crimes, basically they're just yeah, uh, they're youths. As young as 17. Mm, they're, yeah. they're just youths. So from 18% now, we have 33.3% unemployment rates. That is if, if it's not even higher. Than if this. it's uh, not higher, that means if sometimes when you, you, you see an average Nigerian youth, he has gone to school, gone to university, graduated, NYC, completed, masters, completed. No job. No job. It, it's so bad now that even graduates, people with masters, have to apply to be drivers at Dangote. Is that bad? Mm, I remember that. Yes. Um, sorry. Even PhD students. Remember, remember mm. the case of people who applied here in Lagos, uh, graduates who applied to be cleaners. Yes, in I the remember. Lagos Civil Service. Yes, yes. That's where we are as a country. And in my view, if we see entrepreneurs like um, Atiku Abaka creating jobs for people, we should commend them. We should commend them. Because it's not easy. There are many people who have so much money, they die, and that and money, money goes, that money goes with them. HSBC, because, they are so selfish, because they are so selfish mm. that they've not invested in, uh, in their country. Mm. They just touch the money there just to be no for their children. I, I know a family where this happened, and even those children, they can't gain access to the money. Yeah. It's such a bad thing. Atiku has done well. You can talk about a lot of his investments, especially in Adama, in yeah. his home state. Yeah. You know, Faro water. Yeah. They even have a uh, fruit juice. The government uh, is saying that after the juice government, the highest. Yes, is I, of course, he has a university, the American uh, university. Yes, yes. You know after. that is there. So he's uh, invested uh, and wisely too. You know, and uh, those investments are doing well. He has a TV station. Remember, mm. um, even in in Adama, there. So we need to create 
more jobs. So the, job, the environment job, job. that will allow businesses to thrive mm. is what our government needs to create at all levels. So that investors so will that, bring in their money. Yes, they feel comfortable yes. to bring in their money and then we can give jobs to these uh, young people who are roaming the streets. Sam, I, I think of Baka. Yeah, um, the place of uh, Atiku Abubakar uh, in corporate Nigeria is very well documented. You, you can feel his footprints, you know, uh, all over the place, especially in his home state, Adamawa. And like the governor has said, um, if you count, you know, on, on, your, on, your, on your fingers, the number of persons who have impacted that economy, yeah. Atiku Abubakar is going to um, come among the top. So, but we need, that's just one leg of it. We also need government to play its role of creating the right environment, environment for other people. For I think we just want. And just so, looking at the number of investments yeah, we, that we should have be, eluded. We, we, we should be asking ourselves, how many other articles do we have within Adamawa? Do we have in many other states? Are they patriotic, patriotic enough to want to invest in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and I think that is that is very critical. The numbers don't look good. Even the Presidential Economic Advisory Council says you need 19 million to create 19 million jobs to be able to fill the gap mm -hmm. in the unemployment market. That tells you how how bad it is. 19 million every year. Where is that going to come from? Oh, it can only sir. come from the likes of Atiku and the rest of them who have that spirit mm -hmm. to want to you know um, are, invest there, in their economy. There are many Nigerians who came home mm -hmm. to start to one invest. big farm or another. Yes. Insecurity Banditry. has caused them to abandon those mm. farms. We have people now used to be farmers who have now ended up in IDP camps. They can't farm. Yeah. The environment has to be good. Conducive. Remember, more and more uh, foreigners are withdrawing their investment mm. from our country. Let's go. And it's really biting us. Mm. So Sam, thank you for your contribution. Thank you. I can and always. BQ, thank you for your contribution. Always. And that's our offering today. And don't forget to join us on Journalist Hangout on Sunday, 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Journalist Hangout on Sunday. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayadili Uzubakun. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria.